Okay. Um, right. If I just to remind you, last time I, I was talking about Paul um, experience um, of the ch church at um, Philippi, and uh, and he only went there because God directed him. And I then talked about the stuff in Sri Lanka, where God allowed us to go and God wouldn't allow us to go. Now I'm just now moving on to looking at how um Paul found the church how it all worked um and it, it, it's amazing because it's a so this this epistle is so relaxed it, it basically I'm going to read it in a minute but we find the church is something that it just happens and it all seems to work beautifully his relationship and the way he deals with the whole epistle is such that he loves these people he hasn't got any any big issue with them and he just opens his heart and it's a dynamic place. Right, so I just want to read a little bit here. Um, this is, he's got to Corinth, to Philippi, and in Acts um, 16, 13, on the Sabbath day, Paul went outside the city gate where he expected to find a place of prayer. He sat down and began to speak to the women who were gathered there. One of them listening was called Lydia a dealer in purple cloth, and um, the Lord opened her heart to respond to Paul's message. Um, when she and the members of her household were baptised, um, and that's how the church began. Nice and relaxed, didn't have to do anything, it all seemed to work. Um, and, it, you know, great, so it, it's off. But then suddenly, the next move, um, and I think uh, very interesting, that even Paul sometimes, I think, I sense that he thought, Grace, this is great, this piece of cake, this, this is wonderful. Suddenly things happen. So I'll just read the next little bit there to put you in perspective. Um, once he'd be going, going around a slave girl who had a spirit um, which predicted the future. She, she earned a great deal of money and fortune telling. This girl followed Paul and the rest of us shouting, these men are servants of the most high God. She kept this up for many days. Finally, Paul became so troubled that he turned around and said to the spirit in the name of Jesus Christ, I command you come out. And the moment happened and she left. Then the owners of the slave girl realized that their hope of making money had gone. They seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace. Um, and they brought them before the magistrates. Um, and these were Jews. And they were they were throwing the city in an uproar. The crowd joined in the attack against Paul and Silas. The magistrates declared them as, um, as, as people who should be stripped and beaten. And they were severely plogged and thrown into prison. Okay. A sudden change, um, a sudden change. Things had really got bad where they thought all was well. A severe shocking. Now, just go on a little bit to remind you that actually they were Roman citizens and Roman citizens couldn't be flogged, but um, they were. So they were totally against the law. And I won't go into this, I'll talk about this now, but later, when they got out of prison, um, the guys kind of said, well, you can go now. And he said, no, no, we're not, oh, come on. You've done something evil here. Um, you've got to officially say that you've made a mistake. And Paul took his rights in hand. That isn't an issue I want to look at, but um, uh, it's the next issue, which is the biggie. So there Paul is in prison. And what do you think happened? What do you think happened? 25, verses 25 onwards. About midnight, about midnight, it says, Paul and Silas were praying and singing hymns to God while all the other prisoners were listening. Um, now, a question. Well, I'll, actually, I'll just read the rest of it. Suddenly, there was a violent earthquake and the foundations of the prison were shaken. And the, all the doors flew open. The jailer woke up 
saw that the prison doors were open and he drew his sword and was about to kill himself. And Paul said, no, don't, don't worry. We're all here. Um, and then I'll just go on to the little next bit because I don't want to read it again. And he called for lights and um, things happened. And the jailer then said this famous thing. Goodness me, this is so amazing. What must I do to be saved? I'll come back to that in a minute. But um, what I want to focus on, I want to ask you two questions. And I want you to think about this for, say, 10 seconds. And at the end, if you'd like to give me an answer to them, um, one or two, I don't know. The question is, about midnight, Paul and Silas were singing and praying. Now, look here. What would you have done? You have been severely flogged. They've done the wrong thing. They weren't allowed to do. What would your what would be honestly your response to this? That's the first question. Just think about this for 10 seconds. What would be your response? And the second question is, they had an earthquake. Do you think if Paul and Silas hadn't prayed and sung that there would have been an earthquake? Now that is an interesting question, isn't it? Um, okay, well now I was gonna leave it there and move on to another bit, but very interesting, I'll tell you this, that in the last year, I've been studying, doing, reading lots of books because I've had lots of time for my library that's behind me. You can't see. I must have about 150 Christian books. And I've had time to go back and read some of the books that I haven't had um, before. I hadn't read for a long year, 25, 30 years. I don't know, 40 years maybe. Um, and it's been quite interesting that every time I've had um, a, a thing comes up and I think to myself, there is an interesting issue here. I, I suddenly find there's a book that I pick up. Goodness me, that answers it. And I found that dozens of times. And I found that this time in this particular um, case. Now, I just want to read this in a minute. So I picked up a book um, and you won't really see what it is. But it's called by Jack Deere, Surprised by the Voice of God. And you won't be able to read it, but it's there. Now, another interesting thing that I do have to own up that I'm a sinner. Because inside, you won't be able to read it, but there is a name there. And I don't think that Al can read it because it actually belongs to Al. So I'm a very wicked sinner that I've come up and and said, I'm terribly sorry about this, but I must have had it for 25 years or so of, of Al's um, stuff, but I recognize it's Al's, but it's a very good book. Um, and I, it came to an interesting point, you see, because um, I've got to follow this through, and I think you've got to follow it through with me, this, this little bit that kind of brings me to the end, it's a long way to go. Um, uh, it, it's in, here we have, um, something that I think is quite interesting because, um, and I'll take you to this, this strange new place. This is, um, it's called Heroes Like Us. And um, this is in um, the book of, uh, uh, what is it? It's in the book of, uh, I've got it in a minute. It's Potten James. That's right. It's Book of James. Um, and I'll read this bit because this is quite interesting. He says, um, he says, you see, James, look at this now. Now, this, we know this. He says, if any one of you is sick, you should call the elders of the church and pray over him and anoint him with oil in the name of the Lord. And the prayer offered in faith will make the person, the sick person, well. The Lord will raise him up um, and will heal him. Now, you see, Paul says the certainty there. He says, yes, it will happen. It's not that it might happen. He says it will happen. But um, James, I think, 
it says here, could feel the scepticism of some of the readers. They might have been thinking something like, it's all very well for you to say this, James. After all, you are the Lord's brother. You and the other apostles saw the Lord do these famous things. Um, how can you expect us to do miracles like that? We're just ordinary folk, aren't we? We're not like that. We're not like um, James and people like that. And his answer is, he says, look, there's a there's a, a bit I'm going to tell you about. I want to tell you about Elijah. And he says, Elijah, Elijah, get this straight, Matt, people. He said, Elijah is a man just like us. He prayed earnestly that it would not rain. And it didn't rain on the land for three and a half years. And when he prayed again, the heavens opened and it rained. Um, so James suddenly has come in in the middle of this and said, look, look, just look at Elijah. But we say, hang on, he's a great man, fantastic guy. You know, what are you talking about? At first glance, James' reasoning doesn't seem very convincing because he picks out one of the Old Testament supernatural prophets. But Elijah was a special man. Yes, yes. But James points out the opposite. He says he was also a man just like us. James meant that Elijah demonstrated the same kind of instability as we've seen. Soon afterwards, Elijah ran away because he was afraid. And, and what James is saying here, let's get this straight. You are a man or a lady just like us, like me. He's saying you're just like, you know, but you're the same. There's no difference. The same spirit. Uh, Elijah has the same spirit that we have. And, I, and, and James is trying to say, look here, guys, we don't think that there's any hope of us doing things like this. But God knows us in the depths of our heart. He knows the power, the glory is his. And um, that is what he wants to do in us. And I think he's taking this barrier down and saying, look, guys, um, you could be the same person as Paul in prison. And instead of moaning and groaning like probably we would do and feeling sick, we could do the same because the spirit of God that was in Elijah is in us. And I think he's saying to us as a church, I want to I want to bring in these final days a church which demonstrates the same things as happened in the early church. There will be persecution. There will be the same type of things. And I think he's calling us to say, guys, don't live in this world where we don't see miracles. Don't live in this world where, in fact, um, do we really expect anything? We, uh, what, what are our expectancies? When we saw the original church, there are miracles sometimes, and there's, a, there's some persecution, um, but there's a dynamic church. But I don't see us as a dynamic church, the whole church or us. And I think God is saying, let's get this together, guys. There is, there is a, a dynamic in you you have the spirit of God. We have the spirit of God. Let's expect. Let's see more than we have seen. Let's be dynamic. Is it possible? We live in this world where we don't expect. Let's suddenly and dynamically expect God to do absolutely stunning things among us. Um, that's the challenge. Now, I just want to say one other thing. And that is um, about this one verse. What must I do to be saved? I've always in my life wanted to be able wanted someone to say that to me. Um, but I was in Uganda and um, Matthew and Ruth and myself climbed Mount Elgon, which is 14,000, 14 and a half thousand feet. It took three days to get up there and one day to get down. And we had porters. And uh, on the third day, um, we were up nearly or 12,000, 12,500 feet or something like that. And uh, we were in the tent with the porters, just Matthew and myself, a great big tent with a hole in the middle and a fire going up. And these guys just slept in a, in a kind of on a mat in the, in the, 
by the fire. We had our own tent, of course. Ha <laughs> ha. Um, and these guys were in there, and two of them brought their Bibles with them. And Matthew, being very good, was asking them questions, and he was getting answers back. And then one of these guys said this famous question. He said, what must I do to be saved? And I thought, this is impossible. How could someone on the top of a mountain in Uganda say that to me? It just seems so utterly amazing that this one thing that I thought to myself, nobody's ever said it to me. We didn't, they said it to, to, to Matthew, but this was just amazing. And I, I just want to leave that with you that um, fun, some of these things that you think are totally impossible can happen. I believe there's an awful lot in store for us people as we realize the power of God. And I'll stop there. <laughs>